I want to tell you about some research that my colleague Mike George and I have done on the anti-malarial drug called artemisinin. Malaria is a truly dreadful disease that kills huge numbers of people right across the planet. And artemisinin is one of the most effective drugs at the moment against malaria. And we've had funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and also from industry to try and make the process for getting this drug more efficient and greener using less toxic chemicals. Malaria is a disease which is spread by mosquitoes. If you're bitten by a mosquito carrying the plasmodium parasite, it injects this into your bloodstream. The parasite goes into your liver, it multiplies, and then bursts out of your liver and inhabits the red blood cells where it destroys the hemoglobin, stopping the carriage of oxygen around your body and eventually causing the red blood cells to effectively blow up. And the debris can clog the capillaries and cause a really unpleasant death. What is needed are low-cost drugs that can treat people who are infected. And what you need to do is to zap these parasites. You can also kill the mosquitoes, but once you're infected, it doesn't really matter about the mosquitoes, except they could spread the disease to someone else. Artemisin, or some of its derivatives, and here I've got a molecule or model of artemisinin, are molecules that contain a bond with two oxygen atoms. These oxygen atoms can be released in the form of hydrogen peroxide, which I believe then kills the parasites. Artemisinin is called artemisinin because it's extracted from a plant called artemisinin annua, which grows in tropical places, for example, in Vietnam. Nobody's absolutely clear why the plant makes this material, and it only makes small amounts, so you need a lot of plants to extract the material out. And at the moment, the amount of material that can be made from plants is sometimes just enough, or if there's a bad crop, not enough. So what is needed is a way of making this molecule efficiently chemically. Now, you can see it's a pretty complicated molecule. Making this from scratch, although various skilled organic chemists have done it, is too expensive. There are too many steps needed. So there has been some very elegant work done on modifying yeasts so the yeast can react with glucose or eat glucose and turn it into a molecule which with some chemical processes can be turned into artemisinin. The two key steps that we've been looking at are the addition of these two oxygen atoms, so-called peroxide linkage here, which is made by reacting the molecules with oxygen in a special form called singlet oxygen. If you watched our video on oxygen, you will know that normally oxygen has unpaired electrons and is paramagnetic, it's attracted to magnets. But if you have oxygen in solution in the presence of some dyes, colored compounds, if you shine visible light, these dyes can transfer the energy of the light they absorb to the oxygen and pair up the electrons, but not for very long because the electrons quite quickly unpair. So what you've got to do is to get this oxygen to react with your molecules before the electrons can unpair again. Now, the pharmaceutical companies developed a really neat process in which they can make up to perhaps 60 tons a year of this compound. The problem is that the process works really well, but is still quite expensive. And so we've been collaborating with them to do fundamental research to see if there are ways that we can make the process cheaper. And we've had some really quite good success. And we've come up with two different ways. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but let me just give you a flavor. The first thing is that when you're reacting oxygen, which can make things burn, you have to be very careful in your choice of solvent. So we've done some experiments where we use as the solvent liquid CO2. 
CO2 can't burn. So that makes it safer. And we have quite a clever way, which you can read about in our paper, in which we can make the dye molecules stick to a solid acid, because you also need an acid to catalyze the reaction. So you can have a small tube with everything in it that you need, you shine light on it, the precursor goes in, and out at the bottom comes artemisinin. The second experiment, or set of experiments we did, really by chance, was to discover that we could make artemisinin in a mixture of ethanol, that's ethyl alcohol, and water. Now, you may think that's not very surprising, but there is a strong feeling among chemists that you can't do reactions of this singlet oxygen with the paired electrons in water because water is really good at making the electrons unpaired again. But it just turns out that the water has other properties which push the molecules together and make them react faster. But once you're working in water and ethanol, you can then use less toxic acids, for example, dilute sulfuric acid. And the real beauty of the experiment is that we discovered that at the end, if you evaporate off some of the ethanol, the pure product precipitates out and you can just filter off the crystals. Normally, you need to use a lot more solvent to purify the product once you've made it. And everything else, the ethanol you've distilled off, the remaining water, the acid, and everything else can be recycled round and round. The other possibility is that now we are beginning to understand the chemistry, we could make other derivatives of artemisinin. Already, some of the malarial parasites are becoming resistant to artemisinin. And so if we can make new derivatives of it, we may be able to zap the parasites even better. The thing that really excites me is that, especially the ethanol water, is very simple. And the product is so pure that we actually took one crystal and went straight from the lab to our crystallography lab that's next door, and they produced the crystal structure in an hour and a half. And normally, it takes time to grow crystals and get them ready and so on. And here we did it really quickly. The other thing is that I failed my exams, my final exams as a student in organic chemistry. And it was my colleague, Mike George, who persuaded me that our group could actually do something useful for malaria. And I'm really grateful to him that he's made it happen. And if I take the liquid oxygen, you can see I can pull it right up here because, oops, it's not as magnetic as my keys, but you can see there's a really big difference. It sticks to the magnet. So you can see it really is magnetic.